The work of Fourier, Foote and Tyndall gave us a working model of the greenhouse effect. It was now time to calculate the magnitude of the greenhouse effect. In the 1890s, the Swedish geologist Arvid Hergbom began attempting to quantify the natural sources of emissions of carbon dioxide for the purposes of understanding the global carbon cycle. Hergbom found that the estimated carbon production from industrial sources, primarily from the burning of coal, was comparable to the natural sources. These estimates led the Swedish chemist Svante August Arrhenius to consider the effect of changing amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Using a simple mathematical model, similar to one we shall use later, Arrhenius calculated that a doubling of atmospheric carbon dioxide would raise average global temperatures by between 5 and 6 degrees Celsius. That estimate made in 1896 is not so very different from most modern attempts to calculate the temperature change due to increasing carbon dioxide levels. The human emissions of carbon dioxide estimated by Hergmann together with his own calculations, led Arrhenius to conclude that such emissions would lead to warming. But he expected the warming would take thousands of years. Indeed, he suggested that such warming might be beneficial to humanity. So Arrhenius, although having computed the first estimates of global warming, did not believe that anthropogenic climate change would be significant, at least not for thousands of years. When did concern over global warming begin? The first to suggest that increasing carbon dioxide levels might be having an observed effect was the English engineer and inventor Guy Stewart Callender. In 1938, he demonstrated that Earth's surface temperature had increased over the previous 50 years and argued that this temperature increase was due to rising carbon dioxide concentrations. Like Arrhenius, though, Candida thought that this warming would be beneficial, delaying a return of the deadly glaciers. Beyond the global temperature, perhaps the most important set of data ever recorded in the history of climate change is the data collected from the Mauna Loa Observatory in Hawaii, some 3,000 metres above sea level. In 1958, the American scientist Charles David Keeling received funding from the National Science Foundation to collect carbon dioxide samples at this base. In 1961, Keeling produced data showing that carbon dioxide levels were rising steadily in what later became known as the Keeling Curve, a data set that continues to this very day. The data were so concerning that by 1963 the Foundation used Keeling's research in its warning of rapidly increasing amounts of heat-trapping gases. In 1965, US President Lyndon B. Johnson's Science Advisory Committee published their landmark report, Restoring the Quality of Our Environment. This report warned of the harmful effects of fossil fuel emissions. The part that remains in the atmosphere may have a significant effect on climate. Carbon dioxide is nearly transparent to visible light, but it is a strong absorber and back radiator of infrared radiation, particularly in the wavelengths from 12 to 18 microns. Consequently, an increase of atmospheric carbon dioxide could act, much like the glass in a greenhouse, to raise the temperature of the lower air. The committee used the recently available global temperature reconstructions and carbon dioxide data from Keeling to reach their conclusions. They declared the rise in levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide to be the direct result of burning fossil fuel. The committee concluded that human activities were sufficiently large to have significant global impact beyond the area the activities took place. In a chilling admission, the committee wrote, man is unwittingly conducting a vast geophysical experiment. Following the advent of computer models, the American scientist James Hansen published a study in science in 1981 in which he and his colleagues reported that the anthropogenic carbon dioxide warming should emerge from the noise level of natural climate variability by the end of the century and there is a high probability of warming in the 1980s. Potential effects on climate in the 21st century include the creation of drought prone regions in North America and Central Asia as part of a shifting of climatic zones, 
erosion of the West Antarctic ice sheet with a consequent worldwide rise in sea level and opening of the fabled Northwest Passage. In 1988, the same James Hansen, now director of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, was called before the US Congress to give testimony. Hansen told the Congressional Committee that it was 99% certain that the warming trend was not a natural variation, but caused by buildup of carbon dioxide and other artificial gases in the atmosphere. Hansen told the hearing, global warming has reached a level that we can ascribe with a high degree of confidence a cause and effect relationship between the greenhouse effect and observed warming. He added, it is already happening now. These words bluntly recognised that climate change was happening and it was human caused. Thanks for listening.